Praise the Lord. Memorial Day. I'm going to share. When I went to started working for the dealerships back in 1984, my father owned two, two used car dealerships, and my uncle had a car dealership, and, he, and then he went and got another car. So we had all kinds of dealerships in our family. We've had, we, we, we know all about cars. Now, one thing about working in a dealership is that they don't like to take off from work. They like to be open. You ever notice when you go to a dealership on Memorial Day? They're open. You go on Labor Day, they're open. You go July the 4th, they're open. I mean, the only time they're closed is Christmas and Thanksgiving. And sometimes, New Year's. Amen? But I, I promise you, I have worked more holidays than, it, than I've done my share. But nothing aggravated me more, Brother Dale, than to have to work on Memorial Day. Yeah, Dale will be working tomorrow. Of course, it, that goes for all the sales industry. They don't like to take off from work. They like, to, they like to have all their stuff on for sale. They like that money. They're greedy. Amen? But I, I, did never, I never did like working on Memorial Day because I had you know, family that uh, served our country. And I always felt like that's a time that we need to respect them. And you know, you think of the ones that, that went on to serve our country and they never come back. That's really what this holiday is about. Those that didn't make it back. But they went and they served. It reminds me of the story of Jesus. Read your Bibles. He served. He hung on the cross. And we remember Him daily. We were talking, Tammy and I were talking to a young couple last night. And, and we, like I say, we about nearly had church in Super Safe parking lot. But, but uh, we were talking with them. And, and uh, if anybody knows me if, or have known me for any amount of time, if I hear or if I know or if they tell me that they go to another church, I pretty much... Don't invite people, amen? That's just the way I am. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I know that they're going to go to church, but if I know that they attend another church, I don't invite them to ours, unless they don't have church on a specific day. And we were talking last night, and he said, now where's your church? And I told him, we, we play country gospel music at our church, amen? We just do, that's who we are. And he says, uh, well... Really? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, and I said, yeah, we have lead guitar, drums, bass, rhythm, and piano, and organ, and we got singers, and we got this, and we got, we got, we got more singers than we got people sitting in the congregation. Amen? And, and, uh, and I said, we got a steel guitar, and he stopped. You got a steel guitar in the church? I said, yeah, we got a steel guitar in the church. Just don't watch him when he plays, but he, he sounds pretty good. But, you know, we struck up a conversation and we started talking. He says, now where is this place? So I told him where we were and I said, now listen, support your church and your pastor. He's like, okay, I appreciate that. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians. We're still in Ephesians, amen? Everybody say, we're still in Ephesians. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to read a bunch, alright? We're going to read all the way down to verse 23. Verse number 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Everybody there? Everybody found it? Say amen. amen. If you ain't looking, say amen. <laughs> Always count on Tory back there. Amen. <laughs> number 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, everybody say, has blessed us, has blessed us, amen, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy 
and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us in, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He has abounded toward us and in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, His good pleasure which He has purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. There's that inheritance I've been talking about. Being predestinated according to the purpose of Him, who works all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you have believed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of His glory. Wherefore also, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Lord, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, I pray that Your Word would just minister to each and every one of us. And Lord, I thank You. We give You all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Now, these believers at the church of Ephesus stopped wandering and started warring. Who, how many of you remember when you first got saved? Man, it's awesome, wasn't it? And then the next five minutes, the devil's trying to what? The next five minutes, the devil's trying to what? He's trying to get in your ear. He's trying to tell you, oh, you don't need to go over there. Oh, you can go back to this old life. Oh, you can keep doing this. You can keep doing that. You don't have to worry about it. Those people are just going to judge you anyway. Yes. I, am I the only one? Me and Sister Lynn here? Everybody's going to look at you. are going to judge you. And the devil's going to say, oh, you can't. Be, you, you, you just, you know, just go on back. To you. You're not doing anything wrong. Just keep living the way you live. There's a war raging. When you became a Christian, you suddenly became into battle. Amen? You came into battle because the old self, yourself, wants to continue to do what self wants to do, but all of a sudden, you get saved and the, and, and the Holy Spirit starts saying, no. He starts quickening in your soul. Starts talking to you in your mind. Starts putting things in your heart. Tiffany has a friend that got saved not long ago. She was working in an adult video store. She came and she ministered, or she, she gave a testimony here. Remember that, guys? She came and she talked about this place and how, you know, she still felt this, this need to, 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 to be nice to the owner. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, she started feeling conviction is what she started feeling. Amen? She, she wanted to get away from there, but the money kept holding her there. I mean, how many of you do things for money? I work on radios for money. I like to eat. But if it came to a point where I'm working in a video store such as that, I'm out. Because that's direct conflict. That's direct conflict with, with what Jesus Christ done 
for me on the cross. My mother, I always use my mama. She can't whoop me no more. But when I was a kid, she worked in bars. She worked in these places and she was a, 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 a waitress or a bartender or whatever you want to call it. Barmaid, bar fly, I heard that term too. I mean, I've just, you know. And she didn't have any conviction of working there. Except through me. I said, Mama, that's a bad place. All those guys are bad. But she kept kind of creeping back over there. She kept going back to it. She wasn't convicted of it. She wasn't convicted of it. And so, when you get saved, folk, there are things that are going to change in your life. There's some things that are going to change in your life. If they don't change, then you're not doing something right. We're supposed to seek after God with all of our heart. There's, there's a, a gentleman that, that, that got saved just, just recently that, that, that works in a place that he wants to get away from. He feels a conviction of it. He hasn't spoke to me about it, but I know. I know the Lord's laid it on my heart. He works in this place, and, he, and, 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 and you can't combine the two. So he wants out. But he wants all of Jesus. Amen? Is that okay? So when you get saved, you start warring against the flesh. You see, my flesh is, Brother Mike, that, that me and you be out on the lake. You go ahead and have the boat filled up. We'll just use your gas. Have the boat filled up. How many, how many ever took somebody fishing and never give you no money for gas? Oh, praise the Lord. But me and Mike, my will would be that me and Mike and, and Tori and Mark all, and, and maybe even bring old Denton out there and we all load up in a great big old huge bass boat. And we go out this morning on Sunday morning and, and we go catch fish. Now, I'd like to do that. But not on Sunday. I'll tell you a quick story. I'm going to get to my, to my message here in just a minute. But Tammy and I were in Sunday school. Back when Tammy went to Sunday school. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> She's looking at me like, I'm going to get that boy out of church. <laughs> she says... <laughs> Our teacher, Sister Kathy, she, uh, she was sitting there at the table. And we were all, we had our Assembly of God book that we're studying. Amen. We're going through there. We're learning. And Sister, Sister Kathy is talking about having earthly things, fleshly things, worldly things. And this is at about the time that I didn't have a bass boat. Okay? I just didn't have one. I, I, I don't know why I just didn't have one. Me and Mike, Mike invited, he's going to our church at the time. And, and I think we've been together for 40 years, ain't we? <laughs> Pretty close. But me and Mike and Tiffany, she don't even remember it. I asked her one time, do you remember? No, I don't remember that. 1990, July the 4th, we went out fishing in your bass boat. And we sat out there and we fished for a while and, and y'all are catching fish and I'm wondering how come this girl is whooping me catching fish. Look at her daddy, amen. So we're sitting here in the boat. And well, finally, I, 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 a month or two goes by. Boy, he's got me hooked on fishing with, with lures and, and not bringing my coffee can full of worms anymore, amen. So plastic stuff, and I'm fishing with this stuff. And eventually, I wind up buying his boat from him, which was the best boat I, you know, that, 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 that I think I ever had because it never gave me a lick of trouble. I think it's because Tori wasn't old enough to drive it yet. Amen. But he, he was born in 1991, so he, he wasn't born quite yet. But I'd go out, and, I, and this lady, Sister Kathy, she says, what is some of the, the, the things that you would like to have in life? What do you want? I said, well, I want a bass boat. And this very important question she asked me, she says, would the bass boat change your life? And I said, no. No. It would not change my life. She said, okay. She didn't correct me or nothing, but it stuck in my mind the whole time, my whole life. 
So, okay, so I bought Mike's bass boat. Man, I went fishing Saturday. First time I had it, boy, whoosh, I just didn't know what I was doing. You know, I kept looking for the brakes. <laughs> Y'all will get that in a minute. <laughs> so I bought this boat, and I'm going fishing on Saturday morning. I get up at, you know, 6 o'clock or whatever it was, you know, before the sun comes up. Because you've got to be out there because the fish wake up, and you've got to be there when they wake up. Boy, y'all a tough crowd today. <laughs> so I go out there and I fish and I and, and you know we're having I'm having fun and Tori wasn't even born yet and I got my next door neighbor Scott he's going with me and we're out there fishing we're just having a good old time and and we you know we just days going by and we caught three or four or five fish whatever and take it put it back in the garage when I get home and wake up Sunday morning. Now, remember, I work in a dealership, and I don't get much time off. So I load the boat up on the back of the truck. I'll be back before church starts. Right. Six o'clock, here I zoom, go out to the lake. I'm fishing. And all of a sudden, you know, Mike showed me that, you know, see those in these trees, those fish just boiling up the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those fish are schooling. So you want to go after them with a, with a top water or something. Boy, it's fun when you, you, you can throw a, a sink at them and you'll catch them when they're doing that. So I threw this rattle trap out there. And whoosh, boy, I'm telling you, I bet you I caught 35, I don't know how many fish, bunch. And I'm taking them off and I'm chunking them back. I'm taking them. They were black bass, too. And I'm chunking them, and I'm having a good old time. And I look at my watch. Oops, it's about 8.30. I better start heading back to the house. And then, boy, I just latched on to another one. Latched on to 11.30, 12 o'clock rolls around. I bowed my head, and I said, she was right. Kathy was right. I changed. I didn't put God first. I put my enjoyment before God. You know how many times I've been fishing on a Sunday since? Maybe zero, maybe one, two, I, I don't know. But I, I learned a valuable lesson that day that I had to war against my flesh. I had to war against stuff that I like to do. And I said, God, it's fun. I want to go here. I want to do this. He says, yeah. You know, how many of you ever been convicted? Uh, oh, glory. How many of y'all been convicted of something that you really love? But you know it's not right. You know it's not right. Victory Victory. We sang the song, Victory in Jesus, this morning. Victory is won by you standing up, girding up your belt, saying, no, I'm going to do what's right in the sight of God. He don't care if I catch 100 black bass on a Saturday or a Sunday. He don't care if I catch 15. He don't even care if I run out of gas in the boat. He just knows that, that, that I need to put him first. And that's what I do, folks. I put God first in everything I do. You can ask anybody that, anybody that knows me. We, Tammy and I have never gone anywhere that we couldn't take our children. I'm just saying. We have never gone anywhere that we couldn't take our children with us. So if that included going into a bar, we didn't go. If my mama said, come on down here, we go, we're going to have dinner in the bar. Mama, we're not going in there. They had birthday parties down at the Rockin' Double R Rodeo, whatever it's called nowadays. But they had birthday parties for family there. And they know that I don't go to those places. There ain't nothing but trouble in there. If you're looking for trouble, you're going to the right place. Amen? I mean, there, there's people in there that got good intentions, but it's wrong. Sister Donna said it best. I'm telling you, the other night, a couple of Wednesdays ago, she testified about how, how things used to be, how things were when she was younger, the places she would go, the party, and she... That, was it worth it? No. Not worth it a bit. 
I texted her and I said, I want, I want you to know I appreciated your testimony the other night. Because you know what that tells me? It tells me that she has been convicted. She's been convicted of something. Somebody says, well, is it okay to drink? Well, I drink water. I drink Diet Dr. Pepper. But let me tell you, my story is different than yours. I have, I grew up in that mess. I grew up in that stuff. And I've seen what it does. My family, my mom and dad were married nine times between the two of them. Why? Because they never wanted to put their stuff aside and follow God's will. Never wanted to put, a, put away the stuff that, that they thought was fun. I can never remember. I can remember going out to the car at three o'clock in the morning. My mama driving my stepdad home, and and they just been in a fight. The car's all beat up. Windshield busted out, and here he is asleep in the back seat. So I have to reach in there, try to pull him out, get him in the house, and he's just fighting me the whole way. And I finally said, "Just stay there, you fat slob." He stayed in the car, about froze to death. He said, why didn't somebody get me out of the car? I said, I tried to. Here I am, nine years old, trying to be a babysitter to 43-year-old men. Some of the stuff that we do just amazes me. Unbelievable, amen? Mm. The reason God, I want, I want you to know something. You're blessed. You're blessed. We're going to cover that. How, what time is it? Oh boy. The reason God can bless us that is that He's a blessed God. He's a blessed God. Amen? He is not frail. He has every resource at His disposal. The devil doesn't own anything. Y'all remember that. The devil don't own nothing. Amen? He don't own nothing. He don't even own the ground He stands on. God is a good parent. Amen? God is good to us. And watch this. God is good for us. Amen? God is good to us. And God is good for us. There are things out there in this world you can get into and you think it's good, but it ain't worth having. Amen? I I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for half the stuff that goes on in this world. I couldn't care less. But I know this. God doesn't give me everything I want. He doesn't give me every desire that I have. He just helps me with all the need that I have. That's all. He helps me with my need. He knows what I need. He knows that I need to eat every day. He knows that I have to to have a roof over my head. So those things He supplies for me. I give Him all the credit for that. But also, i got to work. I got to work for it. How many of you know somebody thinks they owe everybody owes them? <laughs> Glory to God! Terry knows up. You just owe them. Oh, they owe me. They owe me that place, that church down. They owe. I had four calls yesterday from people wanting something. I'm like, Sister Terry, I finally cut them off. She knows what I'm talking about. Oh, brother, if you could just help us with this. No. I ain't doing it again. Well, is this not Pastor Gary Swetman? (laughs) I said, it sure is. You got the right number. And the bank is closed. Get a job. Amen. Amen. Go get a job. I got bills too. Other people said, I got bill. We got stuff to pay. You don't see me coming asking the church for it. Now, the church is going to help you. Amen. We're going, if, it, if it's a life and death situation, we're going to help you. If you're hungry, we're going to help you. We're going to make sure there's food in your belly. You're going to make sure there's a place for you to stay. We're going to help. I mean, I've helped. I don't know how many people in this church move. I am not. This is not Freedom Life family moving system here. <laughs> Amen. My son has moved out of the house, so don't call me no more to move. I don't like moving. Oh, I just want that piano up those steps. Hire two guys in a truck. Amen. 
I'm tired. Get off your backside and do something. Amen? Glory to God. I don't know where all that came from. But God hath blessed us. Watch this. That's past tense. I'm going to give you this point. We're going to close. Good grief. It's already 12 o'clock. Dale, you took too much time, were you? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God hath blessed us. Now, when you think of blessing, what do you think of? Don't body shout out nothing. What do you think of when, when you think, okay, God hath blessed us? You think of a nice car, a nice job, money in your pocket, you know. I'm going to learn you something today. Is that all right? Learn you something. We'll teach you something. How many of you know that your blessings are spiritual? If you are blessed spiritually, you are blessed. People could give you a million dollars and you're no more better blessed than what you are blessed spiritually. Amen? Because what matters is a hundred years from today, ain't none of us going to be alive. Not here on this earth. So we're blessed today. Amen? God hath blessed us by giving His Son Jesus to die upon the cross so that we could have life everlasting. That's spiritual, folk. He didn't say, hey, come to church, give your 10%, and the church will give you a million dollar check. No. He doesn't say, hey, I'm going to make sure that you have plenty of money all the time. No. He says, but what He does say, I'm going to have, let you be spiritually blessed. Mm. You're going to be spiritually blessed. I always use my mama, like I said, when she got saved, before she passed away, she was blessed spiritually. But guess who else was? Because she said the sinner's prayer. She repeated the sinner's prayer after her firstborn son. And I got to <laughs> baptize my mama. And my mama read the Bible through three times in five years. Amen? How many of us have read the Bible through? <laughs> Two, three of us? My mama started asking questions. She started calling me at work. She'll call me. And, and let me tell you, I was spiritually blessed. I wasn't getting any money. I wasn't getting donuts. I wasn't getting cake. I wasn't getting fried chicken. My mama could cook the best fried chicken. But I was being spiritually blessed because I now know where she is. Amen? Mm. I'm going to leave a phrase with you and i got to read it because it's kind of tough. I... We're closing, I promise. But I want, I want to read you something. No other Christian. Everybody remember I said no other Christian possesses more of God than you do. Did you get that? No, I don't care if it's Jimmy Swaggart. I don't care if it's Billy Graham. I don't care if it's Jesse Duplantis. Amen. No other Christian has more of God than you do right now. Was it Ephesians 4, 7? That everyone is given a measure. Everyone is given a measure of faith. And, and everyone is given a measure of faith. And guess what? It's all the same. You have the same measure. You have the same. You have the same. Y'all have the same. We all have the same measure. But it's what we do with it. I said, it's what we do with it. You can go hide it in a bushel. What's that old song? Hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine. We all have that same measure. It's what we do with it. It's what counts. Would you stand? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You this morning. Lord, we praise You this morning for Your Word. 
Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the measure of faith that you've given to each one of us. Lord, I pray that, that today, Lord, that you would touch each and every heart and life this morning that are here. Lord, I know that, Lord, that there's people here that, that struggle. I know that they go through famine. They go through things. They go through stuff. They wonder what's going on. But today, I want you to realize, church, God loves us. God cares about us. Amen. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Say, Brother Gary, I want you to, to, to lead me through the sinner's prayer. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, and you may have already came to the altar for this, I, I don't know, but I know my son Tori has, has got a phone call and, and a young man asked him to pray. Devin asked Tori to stand in for him. So I'm going to have Tori come. We don't, the drums are okay, son. But I want Tori to come and stand in here in, in right here where Dale declared this is a miracle spot. Amen. Amen. But Devin is sick. He's been sick for well over a month. He's taking medicine and it's, it's helping him, but he's still having problems. So we're going to have Tori stand in for anybody else need prayer. Anybody else that's sick. Anybody else has a hurt, ailment. It doesn't matter what God take care of it. Amen. He can take care of it. He'll fix it right up. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody else? I think these two are brother and sister. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to You. Lord, we lift up Devin this morning, the sickness that he has, this, this illness that he has. Father, right now, Lord, I pray that You would touch him, that You would bless him, that You would heal his body, Father, that You would allow him, Father, to, to be able to have no pain, that You'd allow him to be able to serve You, God. Lord, I praise You. We give You all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank You, Son. Yes, ma'am. You need foot. your foot. Both foot. Both foot. Yeah. Hurt. I'm not doing it all. Well, he's gonna heal it. Amen. Yeah, let, me get, let me get some more oil. Hallelujah. James chapter five says, "Any among you sick, call the elders of the church, lay hands on them, anoint them with oil." Amen. Yeah. We're exercising our faith this morning. Amen? How many of y'all believe that there's healing? How many of you believe that God could heal right now? He said He would. Right now. He said He would. He said He would. Amen? He said if you'd come in faith and ask and believe, that He'd heal you. She said she needs healing. So we're going to pray right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would, that Lord, that you would touch Sister Michelle right now, Father. Her feet, her foot, what, Lord, you know the need, Lord, you know the pain. You see what's going on there right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you, we praise you in advance. We give you all the praise and all the glory in advance for her healing. And we stand upon your word because your word says that by your stripes we are healed. We thank You and we give You all the praise and all the glory, all the honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift this family up right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that You touch this family. Lord, that's just lost this child. Lord, that you would just bless this family, Father. Lord, I don't, they, they don't understand. They don't know why, what's going on. They have no clue. All they know is there's an empty hole in their family. 
And Lord, right now, I pray, Lord, that you would fill that hole, that you would fill that void, that you would comfort this family and these friends and all the people that are involved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, glory. She's still sick. We're going to pray, amen. Father, right now, Lord, I pray that you would touch her. Lord, that you would touch the mother, Father, that you would just bless her, Father. Lord, I just know, Father, that you that you can heal her. Touch her body, Father. Just heal her mind, Father. Lord, this is a, a, a debilitating disease. Lord, I pray that you would just help her through this situation and help the family, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. 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 Your grandmother? Let's pray. Your, it's your grandmother. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up Trisha's grandmother. Father, right now, Jesus, I pray that you would touch her, touch her mind, her mind, body, soul, and spirit. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Many different needs, amen? There's not one of them too big for God. Not one is too big for God. He knows every need. He knows. He cares. He loves you. He's most concerned with our spiritual well-being. Amen. He's mostly concerned with that. Lord, we thank You this morning. Lord, we thank You for these people that are here today, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that You would bless each and every one. You already have blessed us, Father. You've blessed us beyond all measure. Lord, we thank You. We give You all the praise and the glory and honor. And Lord, we just, we, we just magnify Your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.